Well, it comes down to this, Rome versus San Francisco, Italy versus the United States for the defense of the America's Cup. I want to thank Supervisor Chu, Supervisor Ross Mercarimi, and all the other members of the board that have worked hard to support our host city agreement that finally will have its hearing in just a couple of weeks. We move from a term sheet now to a host city agreement uh, where we can go through the final round here and uh, make our best offer uh, to Larry Ellison and his team for the America's Cup defense. Again, here's what's at stake. 9,000 jobs, 1.2 to $1.4 billion of economic activity, not only for our city, but the region, the state, and our nation. The ability to showcase the natural amphitheater, which is the San Francisco Bay, for this extraordinary sport. Even if you don't like sailing, I think you're going to come to love the America's Cup and what it will mean for the city. Uh, imagine the ingredients in terms of the sense of pride and spirit that came uh, from hosting the World Series here. Imagine that in a world stage as relates to the America's Cup where America will defend uh, one of the great traditions uh, and one of the oldest sports uh, in its defense, the America's Cup, over the course of many, many years with pre-regattas moving up to these week-long events, uh, moving into what we hope is many, many years of subsequent defenses here in San Francisco. So again, thank you to all the members of the board. Thank you to uh, my team, Kiri and uh, Jen Matz and the whole team at the Economic Development office. Thank you to Mark Buell at the, um, the Recreation Parks Commission and all our par private partners that have come together for this bid just a few weeks and we'll have a, a good sense. I, I feel confident. We can't feel overconfident, but I feel like we put our best foot forward if indeed the board does move forward this whole city agreement and we can hold our heads high, win or lose. But uh, I like our chances, again, if the board moves expeditiously forward with this host city agreement. I also want to thank uh, the great work that was done uh, last week when we celebrated Veterans Day as only San Francisco and San Franciscans can by truly uh, demonstrating our patriotism, by demonstrating our commitment uh, to our returning veterans, particularly those that have suffered from post-traumatic stress, the, those who have suffered from bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, paranoia, depression, mental illnesses associated with their service and contribution uh, to this country, those that are self-medicating with drug or alcohol addictions, those that have vocational challenges or education challenges that need that support the most. Uh, we're doing that with a supportive housing site at 150 Oda Street, 75 permanent supportive housing units uh, that will allow people to transition to self-sufficiency. A partnership between Swords to Plowshares, our own VA, uh, to the good work that CCDC has done, a partnership uh, that is in many respects unique, uh, not exclusive. Uh, but unique in this state and this nation, a city that does as much or more than any other city uh, to provide for our returning veterans, San Francisco. That's real patriotism. That's why I love this city and I love uh, our cause as it relates to stepping up and stepping in uh, and being there for those that have done so much and sacrificed so much for our country, our veterans. So what a way to celebrate Veterans Day as we did as well with Project Connect, our, our Veterans Connect, in partnership again with those same organizations and the VA uh, that we hope now is made permanent. Uh, we are going to be also doing our regular Project Homeless Connect, hardly is it regular, but our extraordinary project Homeless Connect on December 8th. And those of you that want to volunteer to the December 8th uh, Project Homeless Connect, please call 311 and volunteer for Veterans Connect, volunteer uh, to make a difference to address the issue of poverty in all of its forms and manifestations, but particularly homeless. 12,029 human beings since January 2004 we've assisted off the streets and out of our shelter uh, system. Uh, thousands into permanent supportive housing, the biggest ha housing expansion in our city's history of supportive housing. Uh, this is just another uh, in the uh, long list of examples. Uh, hats off to the 10-year uh, council to end chronic homelessness and Angela Alioto and all their good work. And this is all part of that long-range plan. And whoever is the next mayor needs to take this baton, elevate our efforts to the next level. But I'm really proud of the work we've done uh, to address the issue of chronic homelessness and the work we've done to permanently expand our portfolio of supportive housing units. Again, shelter solves sleep. 
housing solves homelessness, housing with wraparound services. That's the solution. That's where we need to go. And, you know, when I'm lieutenant governor soon now, I look forward to being part of a real discussion about partnering uh, with this city uh, from the state perspective. The state has really dropped the ball, California, in terms of those partnerships with the cities. And again, it's not just San Francisco. Go down to San Diego, go to LA, go to Fresno, any other part of this state, and you'll see uh, some of the same challenges that we see every day here in San Francisco. So we know the work uh, that needs to be done. We know good enough never is. We know there is no having made it. We know as soon as we ask one person, there's someone else who's also going to need our help. Uh, but we're really proud of that work that was done to get this groundbreaking last week. And I just, again, I'm very honored uh, by the contribution of those that were there uh, and the contribution of those that will be served uh, in terms of their commitment to our country uh, and what they've done in terms of their sacrifice. And it's great to be uh, able to do something in return. Uh, two other quick things uh, that deserve a little attention and note. Um, I'm very proud of something we started a number of years ago called Shape Up San Francisco. Uh, we recognized the epidemic of obesity long before a lot of cities started to recognize it. Uh, we created this program many, many years ago in a comprehensive strategy to deal with the issue of obesity, particularly childhood obesity. We put salad bars back in our public schools or put them in public schools. The city funded that. I don't know many cities that fund uh, salad bars. I was out uh, uh, just last week at Fairmont uh, and we were there with all these kids eating broccoli and uh, carrots with a smile on their face, legitimately, because they had that alternative. Uh, we created a program called uh, Drink Water, Says the Otter. People mocked it, but I hope people understand the whole idea is to become sugar savvy, soda free summers, and encourage people not to get all their calories or a lot of calories from calorically sweetened beverages and sodas, but to think about what they drink, not just what they eat. Uh, we have walking challenges, walking partnerships. We've done some amazing things with Safe Route to Schools. We've done great partnerships uh, in terms of edible schoolyards and uh, looking at uh, a curriculum and a narrative uh, in terms of uh, what we eat in a way that can connect uh, to an educational uh, component. All these things uh, have been codified in the Shape Up uh, plan, and we released that uh, plan, our annual uh, uh, plan, uh, just a week ago. Uh, but part of that release came uh, with a veto. Uh, I vetoed this Happy Meal ban that the Board of Supervisors approved. Now, they may overturn my veto. It looks like that might happen. Uh, but I felt like it was important to do that. You know. I think a comprehensive strategy is important. I, I believe in uh, information and education, uh, but I don't believe in substituting government and politicians for the work that parents must do. You know, we supported uh, in this uh, plan, Shape Up SF, the issue of access as much or more than any previous administration, trying to get grocery stores in the southeast sector of San Francisco, and again, trying to provide uh, more alternatives to fast food restaurants. Our farmer's market work, we substantially increased the number of farmer's markets, became the first city to have food stamps allow uh, those debit cards now that they use, uh, allow uh, for access at our farmer's markets. All, again, an effort of dealing with uh, the issue of uh, race, dealing with the issue of economics, dealing with the issue of geography in relationship to the issue of uh, obesity. Uh, but I just don't think deciding for the private sector or deciding on behalf of parents what the private sector can include when they sell a product is uh, good public policy. And the idea of saying you can't sell a Happy Meal in San Francisco just doesn't work for me. Good people can disagree, but I say the preamble in terms of shape up to show you that I understand the intent behind this. And I want to really uh, tip my hat to Eric Marr, Supervisor Marr. Truly, he's committed to these issues. He's been doing it on smoking work that he's done, and we partnered with him on some of those ideas, and he picked up on some work we had done previously and gotten it to a whole new level. And I appreciate his enthusiasm around this, and I appreciate what he's trying to achieve. I, I just, in good conscience, can't support this ban. You know, I was there, and I'll close with this, uh, and I challenge people, you know, go down the grocery store aisles and, and look at all of uh, those cereal boxes, and what are they selling? Toys inside, they're selling cartoons. Um, look at how we market food generally, and look at what it is if the city is going to step in, what the city would probably have to do to be consistent with this ban by banning uh, that kind of marketing and advertising for other salty products, for other sugar-laden products, for other products that uh, uh, increase 
obesity in this city, in this state, in this nation. I, I just think truly in this case uh, it goes too far and if you're going to extend uh, the argument, you're going to have to extend it to those type of things and I, I just don't think that's what we should be doing uh, as public servants. When it comes to our own city property, when it comes to taxpayers' money, I think we have a role to play, but telling the private sector and substituting a poli a politicians uh, for parents, um, give them information, but I think banning things in this case just goes a little too far. So we'll see what happens with that veto and uh, whether or not it's overturned, but again, well intended, uh, but not something I can support. Great work at Shape Up SF, and I want to thank everybody for their great work in partnership with the school district and the Department of Children, Youth, and Family for their commitment to Shape Up SF and this comprehensive strategy. Uh, we won't take a back seat to anyone. Robert Woods Johnson Foundation actually identified Shape Up as one of the country's best practices. We received a big award last year for the work we've done. I want to continue to uh, be recognized in that stead, the city to be recognized in that stead, but uh, I don't think contributing uh, in that context, a Happy Meal ban is a way of doing it. Uh, so, an interesting and exciting week in San Francisco from America's Cup to Veterans Day uh, and the contributions uh, that uh, a lot of people are making uh, to support our veterans to, to the work of uh, dealing with obesity. Uh, I love this city and I appreciate everybody for their hard work in making it a special place.